Okay, folks, here I'm standing on the front deck here. concrete and the methods in which to place it. Little tidbits I've picked up and sort of being in the neighborhood you do know. Now some of you may have watched, I did one did a video about the 10 stupidest things that are commonly done in Costa Rica. Well, I need to bump that up and make it at least 11 or replace one because we ran into definitely one that's the top of the list. Now, as I say to people, I don't like concrete, but when we do have to deal with this beast, when I do use it, I want excellent concrete, not junk. Anyways, in the background, you can hear, well, first of all, the cicadas chirping away at this time of the year, uh, they're rather noisy. And also in the background, you can hear a vibrator working as we're pouring very long, columns you can see in the background well you can see just the whole mess of columns there supporting uh, especially the master bedroom uh, very long columns 15 feet uh, 15 16 feet is the longest column uh, there going down in the, the one corner that really drops off uh, so certainly very important in this type of a structure that it is good concrete to begin with uh, good formula and proper placement now, in placing concrete in any amount, I mean, even as you saw uh, throughout the blog here, you see even our eight inch thick uh, footings are sitting underneath this columns, those were vibrated. I mean, the point is if you don't vibrate concrete, you end up with what they call humming, honeycombing or pockets in your concrete, which means A, it is not strong, and B, it's even massively worse for what we call uh, filtration. I mean, if it's honeycomb, the water is gonna go through it like it's on a freeway. I mean, concrete's bad enough at the best of times, but not done properly, not placed properly, and certainly vibrated and vibrated very well to remove all those air pockets is, to say the least, very critical. Anyways, that's to, uh, we're gonna do a switch over here and we're gonna follow some of that more closely. Okay, now I'm going to pick on the neighboring house here. That swimming pool you see standing there has about an eight foot wall. And I found out from the neighbors living around here that the contractor on this house was pouring this without a vibrator. Now, supposedly they said the project was stopped. Uh, I don't know how you stop a pour because you can't stop a pour. Once you start, you've got to go through to completion. Uh, because they were supposed to be going and getting a vibrator. Well, trying to find a vibrator out of the beach here is almost like looking for unicorns. But at any rate, we don't start a pour without our vibrator sitting there in hand ready to go. Now, conversely, as you can see, here's those very long pilings. Now, super critical and extremely long pilings, yes. But the point is, even if it's is at six or eight inches thick footing, it still needs to be vibrated because air pockets inside the concrete do not provide strength. So, at any rate, you can see this right now, we're currently pouring one column that is roughly 11 feet tall, uh, a little over three meters. So, there were, you know, we got a First of all, a big drop on concrete, you know, and the further you're dropping concrete, the more prone it is to getting air mixed in. And of course, the longer the stack of the concrete, the higher the stack of the concrete, the more prone it is. So for these, I had to go out and buy. I had one vibrator. We had to go out and buy one with a really long wand on it uh, so that it could reach all the way to the bottom. And as I said to the guys, you vibrate the hell out of these because I don't want to see any honeycombing when we strip these forms off. Anyways, that's a, a very critical lesson that I didn't really think I'd have to tell anybody in the construction business that you have to do this. I mean, this is certainly high on your Ten Commandments and in concrete, hmm, it's got to be one, two, or three on the, the list aside from... Uh, you know, basically a good formula. Oh, and picking on it, when the contractor was asked what he was doing with 
since he had no vibrate, he says, oh, well, we're adding more water to the mix so it's runnier. Uh, talk about one horrible answer. You cannot add more water to the mix and turn it into soup without drastically reducing the PSI value of the final concrete product. So, I mean, that is what you call, you know, two wrongs don't exactly make one right. And that is incredibly, I wouldn't call it naive, I just call that plain stupid. Because if you're a contractor and you don't know that, well then, simply, you're not. Anyways, enough for the rant for today, but something else to be aware of, of what goes down in which you would assume, you know, it's another, this is a perfect example of assuming in Costa Rica, assuming something was done that would be standard operating procedure anywhere else is not necessarily the case here, and you got to watch like a bloody hawk to make sure it is done right. Anyways, till another episode. Okay, here we are on a continuation of a little bit on concrete structure and the importance of vibration. Now this was the column that we took the other day as they were vibrating when it was fresh. It now has got the forms removed from it and we've added the cross ties in as well. At, at any rate, you can see there is no honeycombing in this, uh, you know, it's not a perfect texture but that is not the point of vibration. The vibration is to avoid honeycombing, particularly on smaller beams like this when they're getting very high as well in a um, 8 inch by 8 inch column is that you don't necessarily see the problem because of that steel cage running up the center of columns like this. They're very prone for blockage and then therefore you'll get uh, an air pocket in the center of the column which of course drastically reduces its strength. And last to check, nobody in my crew has the name Superman, so nobody can see in there what's going on. So at any rate, that's the other point of uh, vibration and its importance to structural integrity. And just going to cover off uh, a session here on the structural components of the foundation for this home. So we'll continue on there as I go off camera and explain what's going on. Well, first off, Costa Rica is a little paranoid about uh, earthquakes uh, with, you know, to some degree of reason. However, they've categorized it as seismic zone four, which then floats down through all of the engineers and the structures that are set up to hold up houses. Costa Rica is not and does not justify seismic zone four, which is equal to Tokyo and San Francisco. Three would make sense, so most structures are overdone by 15% something like that now here now and this has sort of crept in over the last few years uh, And considering there really is not being a severe earthquake here that's caused massive structural collapse uh, usually the big problem is in two-story concrete structures where there's a fracturing between floors uh, and another good reason that concrete isn't a particularly great product because simply when the ground's dancing, concrete doesn't dance that well. So anyways, that little bit of information reflects what we have here. Now, we consider this a little excessive. Now, I've done this in stills, but I haven't done a video on the actual structure. Now, here is a hole. This is typical. This is the very center of the main house, and there's going to be four wood columns going up to support the roof so they stand on these four concrete columns that are down on an eight inch thick concrete base here that's like you know, 1.8 meters square now they're dug down on a hole there simply because that's where we found terra firma you know the firm ground the, the top layer of clay was not especially solid so now this hole, we did dig most of it out with the back hole because of the size of it uh, and the number of rocks in it. And then we finished it off by hand. But underneath all of these columns, that's a common thread. You can see these were all dug down by hand. And some, of course, where we assisted with the, with the back hole when it was, we were in rock hell. But underneath all of these, that's what is a, a hole down in the ground into so that anyways these columns are sitting on 
this concrete footing down in the ground. Now, the architects have insisted that we have to do these stirrups or these beams tying one column to the other saying, well, it's to stop the house from dancing down the hill. Well, basically I find that ridiculous, but at any rate, go with the flow here. So it certainly isn't going to dance now with these column, with these beams in between the columns, tying those together. We're just in the process of doing that now. As you can see here, we run steel out of each column at the appropriate height. Basically, we're putting these where it's convenient, where the beams are, can be as close to the ground as possible for the least amount of work. Plus also, if you support a column up higher, it creates a much stronger network. If we're going to do this, well, we may as well at least do it as best as is possible. Now here's one where we're taking the hillside slope going down and tying in, as you can see, well, in this case, about three feet above the base of the column, so that creates a very strong structure over there in that bed, and we're just forming that up today. You can see all of this, basically a collar going all the way around, and in this sucker, to say the least, is not going to dance down the hill in a severe earthquake. But at any rate, uh, that is basically what the system is about. I uh, just thought I'd get it all on video here before we start burying this all and hiding what exactly is going on. Uh, now, the, this is, these columns here will be supporting the deck. Now, the deck supports being much lighter weight are not going to be tied together here is the bedroom now completed well almost complete we just poured two of these columns here literally two or three minutes ago and the guys stopped for breakfast uh, or their snack and uh, i'm taking the quiet opportunity to cover off uh, what's done but i mean that is our beefiest column in the whole project right there um get over here that one in the very corner there is when we just finished pouring that one actually goes down into the base of the cabrata uh, or creek and is going to have a little dam built around the uh, base of that column um, so we're going to put rocks and cementos all in you can see the bar sticking out of the base of the column so that will create one dam and there will be another one right up here um, connecting these two columns here to, uh, together and using them as part of the support network. But anyways, this gives you, well, we're not up, but I'm about uh, three feet below what is the ground level of, floor level of the master bedroom. So basically up in the trees and with the view over the trees out to the Pacific there. With that going, folks, I'll sign off until the next session.